Hey everybody, welcome to Sew with Joe. Today we're picking up where we left off last time, working on my blanket project, putting the t-shirt patch on the uh, back side of my, uh, back side, front side, good side, bad side, whatever, other side of my blanket project. And we'll be spreading some good world news. Today we're talking about one of my favorite things, and that is um, electricity and clean power and the way the world is adapting so that someday maybe there won't have to be a central grid. Um, well, there probably always have to be some sort of a grid, but just to take a little bit of the load off of the major generation companies, pardon the massive pun there. Um, so the story today comes out of Chicago and Chicago has uh, experienced a number of power disruptions in the recent past and they have decided that they need to do something about it uh, because if the power company can't consistently provide power uh, well the hospitals especially and public areas need power so what they've done in Chicago is they have created a secondary microgrid and that microgrid connects anyone who is participating in it uh, together so that there is a central battery storage and power supply should the major um, utilities fail again. So they've connected a number of different community elements such as end users, public users, individual users, that sort of thing. The, the you and I of of the world who would be uh, contributing via rooftop solar or wind generators or what have you, whatever source of power that we can contribute to the grid we would be adding in. And also that would connect us to generation from uh, libraries, colleges, uh, military, nursing homes, um, personal care homes, uh, any solar generation that's out there that is not consistent solar generation, right? You, you only have it as you have sun during the day. So it would connect you to a wider community. And it would also provide with um, a central battery, a central storage unit. So that it might reduce the individual strain of owning and uh, maintaining batteries is to have a battery room you know it needs to meet spe certain specifications and depending on how your home is set up you might not be able to meet those specifications after it's all it's all up to your local area so don't don't ask me I don't know <laughs> then you can all, all join together basically a power cooperative and realistically if you set it up right you could have a deal going with the power company that if the power co-op is generating more then it can feed back into it 
and maybe even get a rebate for all these people for their uh, for their uh, contributive efforts to this co-op. You know, if uh, if you can get the power companies online with that, which might be difficult, um, you know, could end up saving the end users money immediately, and it would, you know, nice to have immediate feed or Im immediate. Um, satisfaction from putting in solar in the form of lowered bills. But if you can feed back into the power company and maybe make some money off of them, especially since they can then claim that as clean renewable energy, which likely is going to be priced higher. So like, will people be willing to pay a few cents per kilowatt hour more for clean energy than for nuclear or, you know, the big question will be for with, uh, with hydro, I would think, because hydro since the infrastructure is already there, it's it's clean, you know, like hydro doesn't produce waste. Well, I shouldn't say that. But uh, the, not in the same way that uh, fission reactors produce nuclear waste. That sort of thing. Hydro is regarded as one, one of the most clean sources, so I'm an, I'm an, I'm an advocate of it. Uh, maybe not for building new dams in just any location, but uh, it's de it's definitely one of the cleaner power sources for um, situations where the infrastructure already exists. And the biggest benefit for uh, this co-op is that everyone, or this co-op, this microgrid in Chicago, the main benefit is more reliable power for everybody. So when, it, it's basically like having a, a generator that kicks in automatically in your home when the, the power on the mains go out that there's an auto switch over and your generator just fires up. So you'd just be going along in your house, all of a sudden, boop, you see a little blip on your lights, and oh, you're suddenly switched over to the uh, the microgrid, the local microgrid, rather than the main power company, and that should be all you notice. If they if they set it up right, that should be all you notice. If they really set it up right and you spend the money, you shouldn't even notice a blip on your lights. Amazing how that technology can can be set up. And I'm I'm just not one to go to that level of automation on a lot of things. Like I wouldn't mind doing a few things more automated. Um, but I I don't know. I like doing things the old way. I guess. And this is something that you can do in your community as well, is you can get involved in a local grid like this. You know, uh, it's, a, it's a long process. It's, I think they said they've been working on this since 17. So five years, five years into building this. So it's something that takes, takes time. But if you wanna get involved with it, start talking to your neighbors about it. Start talking to uh, the council 
local council about it, whoever is in charge, and see if there's plans. Some places, it's, I'm sure it's already in the works. And if not, then you should at least be aware of it because the, the major power companies are very, very vulnerable. Um, and I'm not saying microgrids wouldn't be, but major power companies, it doesn't take much to shut them down. As scary as that is to say, you know, you hit a few specific locations and they would be out of commission for years. So, these micro grids may all of a sudden become necessary and life saving measures. Everything runs off electric electricity these days, and it's going to be tough to pull us away from those habits. I think that's part of the future, connecting everybody with alternate power sources because big power isn't always going to be there for you. And just, uh, yeah. Maybe just maybe just work on using less power as a as a first line of defense because that'll be that'll be the big thing. When there is no power, you suddenly realize what is actually important to have power going to. Like if you've ever had an outage and you have a generator, one generator, and you have to figure out how much you can run off of that generator and what's actually important enough to run off of that generator it makes you look at your life a whole lot differently and you start thinking okay what else can I do to not consume power but I think I am going to leave you with that thought Maybe spend a few uh, few days pondering that one. What can I do? In order to consume less power. Till then, I'd just say thank you for the time we get to spend together. I do really appreciate it. Till next time. Keep on chilling. Don't forget your cookie. Hmm. Peace.